diffuse large B-cell lymphoma is aggressive, but we know there are subgroups that do a little bit better. They have a, a better prognosis, such as those with no bulky disease. Might younger age be a factor that could positively influence therapy? To answer that question, we are here at ASH to consider fewer cycles of CHOP may be an option in young patients. And to do that, we are with Viola Pochel, who is an MD and a manager of the high-grade non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and aggressive B-cell lymphoma study groups at Saarland University Medical School in Germany. This is in younger patients, but it's a broad group. It's 18 to 60. Yes. Is this a group that you, th that you thought ahead of time? What was the evidence that this might be a group that you could cut it a bit? Well, at the ASH meeting 2004, we presented the results of the MINT trial. And there we identified a very favorable subgroup um, in this patient population that is doing so well, they had a three-year progression-free survival of 95%. And uh, we thought it is worth investigating whether we could maintain efficacy and reduce toxicity by reduction of CHOP cycles. So the FLYER study, as it's called, has actually been a 10-year effort that started with MINT. Now, after 10 years, you've got enough patients. What are you saying? Well, that's great. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's always nice to hear. So, so we, we were really happy uh, when we got the results and it was so fantastic. We had uh, over 10 years recruitment period. Uh, we had patients from 138 uh, centers from countries from Israel, from Italy, Norway, Denmark and Germany. And yeah, it's, it's great to receive those results and also that it works because you never know whether it works in the end. Well, and it was really tight results in both arms. Three-year event-free survival was identical, 89%. When do you get identical results in both treatment arms? And for three-year overall survival, it was 99% in patients receiving cycles of CHOP uh, four versus 98% with six. I mean, again, one percentage point difference. Yeah, you can't get better results than that in terms of it's pretty much the same. Yes, it is. And we uh, also tested non-inferiority. We didn't want to test the same right. equally, right. but we tested uh, non-inferiority. So we were so happy to get these results. What about relapse rate? Well, we saw some relapses. We had about 4 to 5% of relapses. Uh, in total, that was, there were 24 patients relapsed, 13 in the standard arm and 11 in the experimental arm. And, um, but interestingly, we, we saw uh, also relapses with longer follow-up, but identical in both arms. And now we are going uh, into our yeah, histology and have a look at, closer look at those patients, whether they might have a different biology or yeah, to see what is really, is it a de novo lymphoma? We are, we'll have to look that up. So that it really appears that chemotherapy can be spared without compromising prognosis in this particular younger group of patients. Yes. That's really good news. Yeah, that's great. And uh, if you spare chemotherapy, um, you also reduce toxicity. So we uh, saw a reduction of hematological toxicity of about a third and also non-hematological toxicity of about a third. And this is a very crucial benefit for patients. It's really improving their life very much. Are you confident enough now that if you were just a practitioner out there looking at the data that you might go, I think I'm gonna stick with four instead of six. Yes. You think this is now time to do that? Well, yes, we do it in our, um, in our department, of course. And, but um, standard of care is always after, um, after a scientific discussion. You, and this starts now, this discussion. And, um, but I'm quite confident that the guidelines might change and uh, that a lot of uh, patients with that favorable prognosis will uh, receive in future only four cycles of job.